In the diagram, ABCD is a square, ABE is equilateral, triangle AEF is equilateral. What is the measure of angle DAF? Well, if uh, ABCD is a square, then uh, obviously those four sides are equal. And ABE is equilateral, so that means those three sides are the same. Now, they're also saying that A, E, A, E, F, A, E, F. So that triangle is also equilateral. So those are all the same. So we can kind of do some angle chasing here and see what we get. Uh, D, A, F is this angle in here, right? Well, this would be 60 because that's equilateral. This whole thing is 90 since that's obviously part of the square so that means this would be 30 and let's see here uh, since this would be 60 then that means this would be also 30 so not too much difficulty to figure out that angle DAF is 30 degrees in a jar the ratio of the number of dimes to the number of quarters is 3 to 2 if the total value of these coins is $4, how many dimes are in the jar? So 3 to 2 is the ratio. So I'll just say 3D for the number of dimes. And each dime is worth 10 cents. And then 2D for the number of quarters. And each quarter is worth 25 cents. And that total they're saying is $4. And I'm just going to put 400 to represent the number of cents. And I think that's it. That's the algebra. So this is pretty straightforward. So this will be 30D plus 50D is 400. So 80D is 400. And therefore D is 5. And they actually specifically want the number of dimes, which was 3D. So 3D would be 15. So there's 15 dimes uh, in the jar. Positive integers, m and n satisfy m times n is 5,000. If m is not divisible by 10 and n is not divisible by 10, what is the value of m plus n? m, n, they're saying is 5,000. So let's first break up 5,000 into its prime factors. And it's 2 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 4. Now, m is not divisible by 10. That's very important. And n is also not divisible by 10. So that means that m cannot have two any combination of 2 and 5 because as soon as you put in a 2 and a 5 that's equal that equals 10 2 times 5 and that would make m divisible by 10 and th that's not allowed so that means that m has to have either all twos or all fives that kind of thing so what I'll do is I'll make M the all twos and I'll make N the all fives. And that's the only way to do this, really. So this becomes 8 and this becomes, I believe, 625. And that's it. So there we want M plus N. That's easy. M plus N would be, therefore, 8 plus 625. And that is 633. A function F satisfies f at x plus f at x plus 3 is 2x plus 5 for all x if f at x uh, sorry f at 8 plus f at 2 is 12 determine the value of f at 5 hmm well let's see here this is the only thing they give us right okay well let's start with well this looks to me like a difference of 3 you got x and then x plus 3 so let's Mm, f at 5 is sort of in the middle here, so I think we're going to have to first try to fiddle with f at 8 plus f at 5, and then eventually try to work with f at 5 plus f at 2, and then somehow, some way, this might fall under, fall all into place. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to go with this sort of fundamental rule here. So f at x plus f at x plus 3 is 2x plus 5. So in this case, this is sort of my x, this 5, and this is sort of my x plus 3, right? Which is 5 plus 3. Okay, so that means 2x plus 5 would basically be 2 times 5 
plus 5 because x is 5. So that is what, 15? Okay. Hmm. All right, not sure how that helps us in any way, but let's just keep going here. So now let's turn our attention to this. Same kind of story, looking at this guy. This is sort of my x now, this 2. And then this 5 is the x plus 3. So same thing, 2x plus 5 would be the x this time is 2. So this is 9. Okay. So what do I do now? And I think I have to combine these. Yeah, I have to combine them. Okay. So that means I got to add this guy with this guy. Okay. So when I do, I get f at 8 plus two of those f at 5s, and then plus f at 2. And that would be this 15 and 9 if you add the other sides. Ah, okay, I got it. Okay, so then f at 8 plus f at 2, they already told us, is 12. So that's 12 plus this 2 f at 5 is 24. And that means that 2 f at 5 is 12, and therefore f at 5 is equal to 6. There you go. It all, as anticipated, all com came into place. Determine all the real numbers x for which the cube root of 2 plus x squared plus 3 times the cube root of 2 minus x squared is equal to 4 times the cube root of 4 minus x squared. Well, uh, there's several ways of doing this. I'm just trying to think what's the best way here. Let me make some substitutions here. That, that 4 minus x squared immediately kind of jumped out at me because that can be factored into 2, 2, x, x minus plus. And these guys are those factors. So I'm going to let this guy, 2 minus x, it uh, doesn't really matter how you do it. Uh, let's just use this as A and this as B. And let's put that in there. So this would basically be A squared to the power of one-third, because that's basically what a cube root is. It's the power of one-third. Plus three times uh, B squared to the power of one-third is equal to four times uh, well, that guy is just a, a, a times b, so it's a times b to the power of one third. Yeah. Okay. So I, I hope this I hope this simplifies things uh, rather than making it more complicated. Okay. So let's do this now. So let's bring this here. So this would be a to the two thirds plus three b to the two thirds is equal to four a to the one-third, b to the one-third. Okay, let's put everything on one side. Uh, a to the two-thirds minus four. Well, I'm, I'm debating whether I should expand it or just leave it in brackets. I'll leave it in brackets for now because I have an idea here. Okay, now this, this looks very, very nice to me. It may not look that nice to you, but... I can f figure out a way to factor it if I kind of break this up. If I sort of just put that like that, and then minus 4ab to the one-third. Yeah, and I, I think at this point I can break it up just to make it a little bit more clearer, like that. And then the 3b to the one-third. Uh, just the B, yeah, just that part squared. Okay, got to do that carefully. Okay, so now this, this is factorable. Um, if you're not, if it's not entirely obvious, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll make it, I'll do a little bit of a, what about if I had this, A squared minus 4AB plus 3B squared? Would you be able to factor that? And you would, right? That you say, well, that's easy. That's a a three uh, b b, and then minus minus. I think, right? Well, the same kind of story up here. It's a little bit different, but it it's sort of the same principle that it would be 
Uh, let's just see here. Let me do this carefully. It would be a to the one third, a to the one third, b uh, three b to the one third, and then a b to the one third, and I believe minus minus. So same kind of story. And then at this point now we're pretty much done. We're very close to the end. This basically means that either a to the one third is equal to b to the one third, which basically means that a equals b. Or it means that this guy, a to the one third minus three b to the one third is equal to zero. And that would give me a situation of a to the one third is equal to three b to the one third. And if I take everything to the third power, that would be a is equal to 27b. So these are the two solutions. Well, I gotta get the value for x though. So I'm not done. Let's go back and see what did, what were my substitutions here. The first substitution was this guy. That a was two plus x, and b was two minus x. Okay, so let me just write that over here. A was two plus x, and um, b was two minus x. Okay, so let's let's first work with this guy. So that means 2 plus x is equal to 2 minus x. So that basically means that 2x is 0. So that means x is 0. So that's the first solution. Because what are we trying to find here? Uh, all real numbers x. Okay, so we got to find the value for x. Okay, so I got 1. Now let's turn our attention to that one. So this means that 2 plus x is equal to 27 times 2 minus x. Okay, 2 plus x is 54 minus 27x, 28x is equal to 52, and therefore x is equal to 52 over 28. And in lowest terms, I believe, uh, divided by 4, right? So 13 over 7. And there you go. Those are the two solutions for x. Ten lockers in a row. Uh, lockers are numbered in order with the positive integers 1 through 10. Each locker is to be painted either blue, red, or green subject to the following rules. The two lockers numbered M and N are painted different colors. Whenever M minus N is odd, it is not required that all three lockers be used. How many ways can the collection of lockers be painted? Hmm. Okay. All right. So we've got a few scenarios here. Mm, the first scenario is that one color for all the even lockers and one color for all the odd lockers. And that's it. So we had like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can just alternate. So for the even lockers, um, we can have uh, three choices, right? Either blue, red, or green. So three choices. So... Then for the odd locker, we got to choose something that has not been chosen already. So if we chose, let's say, blue, we have red and green left. So we have two choices remaining for the odd. So three times two would be the total, which is six. Now, let me just think about this for a second. One color for even lockers, right? So, for example, uh, this is... Uh, the first one is odd, so this would be, let's just say it's blue, blue, blue. Oops, is this right? Yeah. So the second, the fourth, the sixth, the eighth, and the tenth. And then another color for the odd, so let's just put red, red. And let me see if this holds up here. According to the rules. Two lockers, numbered MN, are painted different colors whenever M minus N is odd. So this was, let's say, the fourth, and this is the First, so four minus one is three, which is odd, and they are yes, indeed, different colors. So basically, that's why the odd and the even uh, discussion came in because of this rule right here. 
and it's not required at all three yeah so that that's also held up we didn't use all three colors we probably could but we didn't okay so this i'm pretty satisfied with that scenario so let's go with the next one the next one would be that we choose one color uh, for um, for the even lockers but then we choose we can choose between two two colors for the odd locker for the odd lockers plural okay so let's talk about this for the uh, one color for the even lockers the same kind of thing we have three choices for that one now for the two colors for the odd lockers uh, that would be in one let's see here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five yeah so this is locker number one three five seven and nine those are the odd numbers right now for the first odd we have two choices this time so uh, for example if I chose blue as my color for the even guys even lockers I should say then for the odd lockers I can choose between red and green so I've essentially got two choices I can choose either red or green so two choices there two choices there and so on so the total number of choices would be two 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 so two times two times two times two times two which is 32 yeah so this is actually this becomes a 32 believe it or not interestingly but it's actually not that straightforward because we have to subtract two scenarios from this 32 to make it 30. You say, well, why? Because two scenarios would be exactly like this, and that's when they're all red, for example, like red, 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 or if they're all green. If you did that, it would be exactly like scenario number one. So those two scenarios would be double counted. So you'd have to subtract that. So not that easy. So that drops down to 30, and this remains at 3. So the total here would be thir 3 times 30, which is 90. All right. And then the, th the third and final scenario is identical to, well, not identical, but exactly like similar to the third scenario where you choose two colors uh, for the even lockers and then you choose only one color for the odd lockers and when you do you would come up with that 90 in the exact same way as we did up there so now the grand total therefore that six this 90 and this 90 so that's one, 186 total.